everybody so today I am doing the YouTube pagan challenge week one um, I can't believe it took me so long to actually find this out but I'm so excited to be doing it good job Annika I think this is fantastic a great way to get the community involved as a whole and um, I love that it's so scheduled and I already have all the topics um, figured out and so so people that are like me that aren't like so schedule and have you know specific whoop, specific topics already in mind and um, this is a great way for them to to kind of get something together and so I really appreciate that so thanks Annika um, I'm gonna have all the weeks down below in case if you want to know or you're not part of that Facebook group or whatever but anyway so week one we are talking about how we found our paths <sighs> okay well I feel like my path and my spirituality really revolves of around the idea of of God and trying to not necessarily figure out um, who God is or what God is but trying to find that comfortability within that and um, so I think it really needs to start there um, I was raised in a Hispanic Catholic Church and so we, the, you know, church, we all, everything was in Spanish, um, so the mass was in Spanish, our prayers were in Spanish and everything. And when my parents divorced, we moved to a different city and um, we didn't have as many Hispanic um, friends or neighbors or, you know, trying to find a new church. There wasn't very many Hispanic um, options, I think, as many as, you know, were when I first, my other city was. And so, um, we didn't go to church as often, and I remember talking to my mom saying that, you know, saying these Spanish prayers just don't ring true for me anymore, and um, trying to find other ways and other forms of communication with God. And she was, you know, has always been a very spiritual, open-minded person. So she basically told me, well, you know, you can go ahead and talk to God like, you know, he's sitting right there in the bed next to you. Like, just have a full-blown conversation with him. He'll hear you. You don't have to go to church um, to have a relationship with God or to talk to God. Um, and so also being raised heavily in the um, Catholic faith, you know, you, you talk about many different um, saints and not so much like Jesus and also moving to this other city, like they had a lot of Jesus-centered churches, which again, never felt right for me. So I think at that time we were definitely bouncing from like church to church, trying to find like a right one um, while my mom was going through all this emotional turmoil that, you know, I didn't have a clue about when I was that young, but, um, but whatever. And so... Um, I think probably when I was like in middle school, um, we basically stopped trying to find a church. Um, so that was really the time where I started looking for uh, different ways um, to figure out my spirituality. And I was trying to remember who told who, but in sixth grade, me and my friend actually found some witchy books. And I can't remember if she found them or if I found them. Most likely I found them, I just want to say that. Um, but um, I remember we were kind of in like this little coven thing and we were trying to do research and um, remind you that was back in the day when we had AOL, this was like what 99 or something like that, and we had AOL and we again we're in sixth grade so we didn't have like transportation where we could go to like the library or we could go up to different places we didn't really even actually in sixth grade I didn't even have a computer at the time so um, it was very limited to like just one or two sources of information and I remember even like trying to make a wand and we found um, just gorgeous branches off a tree and trying to decorate them with like stuff that we already had and that was such an interesting um, time and discovery for me because I remember her being a really good friend and um, and yeah that was actually the first time where witchcraft really like I really remember it being part of my life um, and then in seventh grade I remember me and that girl kind of fading away and not becoming as close friends 
and at the same time I remember this girl, this new girl was new to our school and she was um, this very gothic girl and everybody in the school thought she was a witch and I just remember being like oh, I totally want to become friends with this girl um, which was really awkward because I was such a shy person that there was no way that was even gonna happen unless she came up to me but anyway I still remember having that kind of fascination with it and around it and I think that was also the time where um, us as a family me my mom and my brother actually all sat around and watched Char Charmed and um, and I remember being also again influenced with that and thinking well how much is real and how much really is um, fake and TV you know um, maybe some things where like obviously the powers are probably fake um, and maybe some spells but can you really have some type of influence with you know energy or well I didn't specifically think energy but like with spirit and and having some kind of connection with spirit and I remember talking about herbs and they did like tea leaf readings and I, that was one of my favorite the gypsy episode that was one of my favorite episodes and I remember being very drawn to that episode and that kind of way of like a medicinal um, herbal type of witchcraft and um, and so whoop, I keep hitting my tripod I'm sorry and, um, and so I remember being like very drawn to that and then um, in eighth grade I think that's when I finally saw the craft and I was like what and then I had a different set of friends who we were like all into that and um, we started dressing very alternatively which I think I'd have always been um, into that type of fashion anyways just never being comfortable within myself to really dress like it and at the time I felt very much comfortable with myself with this newly gained um, source of information where I felt like this is who I really was and you know I was obsessed with Sabrina Teenage Witch and everything and again I felt very drawn like well obviously like the powers and snapping fingers changing clothes that's obviously not realistic but are some things relatable you know um, and so this whole time, like, I knew um, I wanted to be a witch. I just needed to figure out how. And so when we came across the craft, I felt that um, was the most, again, something's very unrealistic, but the most authentic way that, hey, like, that spell book might actually be real. And, you know, um, and having a coven and what it, that was like and, and, talking about her god being in, in the trees and the cl clouds and the sky and, and um, you know how mental is everything and it's the the ground and the and everything and kind of me figuring out like oh well you know that kind of makes sense and that's kind of goes along with what I believe as well and um, and so so we had another another group of friends we had a, um, a little coven and I think that was actually four of us and one of the girls was a much older girl who also had dabbled in witchcraft as well. And so we didn't do really much. I remember like we all got together and did uh, a rain spell and actually that afternoon it did rain and I mean whether it was the weather because we didn't check the weather or you know whatever it was but we thought that was amazing and awesome. And we still have like this little place where we hung out and and did spells and you know wrote in our book of shadows and, and um, just kind of tried to talk about like what element we were and and um, you know talk about astrology and and figure stuff out and and um, and read and whatever in this like um, it was like this these bushes which sound really really weird reared really really weird reared I can't even say weird um, but it's like these trees and like bushes and um, and it's like right next to like a lake or a pond type thing and somehow one day we found like a path that led you in there and inside this path it looked like somebody had like made a section for like a picnic area or so it was just kind of cleared in this little area and um, we never like seen anybody else go in there um, but we kind of claimed that as our own space and, and we used to do things in there and anyway and so that was another time where I felt really, you know, 
um, connected uh, spiritually and where I felt one of the first moments where I really felt like I was a witch and was really learning to be witchy and, and learning about the craft. Um, and and then like basically from that time throughout high school um, my spirituality was like phew I don't even know who I was at um, in high school like I was feel I've always felt like I was a completely different person I hated high school I was just glad to be out of there and it was just I don't know whatever okay anyway, so then finally comes my college life and um, when I was living on my own and I was able to have my own space and um, freedom to do whatever I wanted was really when I felt really drawn and called to it. So having that time, that solitude really was able, I was able to look within myself and realize something was missing spiritually. And that's when I came across um, Scott Cunningham's um, Wicca and I absolutely fell in love and that was the first book I've actually ever bought. My first tarot deck I bought I was in high school sometime because like I said um, it, throughout my whole life it really had gone there's been a couple things that have like popped up and gone down and, and you know something will pop up and then go down whatever and so I want to say like between maybe middle school and high school somewhere I did buy a tarot deck that I just never really used because I didn't know how and and all this other stuff and, and so I remember like taking it out and wanting to play with it and wanting to learn more and and finding this book and, and realizing like this is not only witchcraft but it can be a religion and realizing that you know maybe I am Wiccan and and you know some of the aspects that he was talked about in the book I was just like yeah it's so right on that makes complete sense and some of the things were like mm, well, okay okay I, I can try to roll with that I can try to roll with that we can see where it goes and um, and so I bought the book I've been had do, been doing so much more research online and um, there had been a couple websites that was like um, let's say a Facebook for, for witches and pagans that had joined and a lot of good information came um, in there from from all these different um, message boards and that's how actually in one of those message boards message boards um, I got a link for um, a charming pixie flora video and absolutely saw it and fell in love with her and you know of course stayed up all night watching her videos and then the next night um, stayed up watching somebody else's videos and, and it just really spread and now I'm making my own videos and I've been for what three years now Whew. um so yeah and that's kind of where I am today it's been um, crazy and been a very interesting interesting ride um, I feel like I've never actually claimed the title of Wiccan um, I've always claim the title witch um, for again as long as I can remember in sixth grade um, but um, the religious aspect has always gotten me into like this weird place of like I'm not sure exactly where I belong and I feel like the agnostic paganism is really where I feel um, the closest thing to it I saw a video the other day of it was like agnostic versus atheist and um, like the meanings behind those and this girl had like a very interesting take on what agnosticism is to her and um, I think she explained it so well. I'm going to put a link down below for her video if you guys want to check that out um, but it was just so interesting um, which is really cool but um, but I don't know. I don't know like where I am and where my path is going to lead but I'm so glad that no matter what I've always felt this like tiny pool and I think a lot of us can really relate to that like no matter where we are in our um, face in our past that um, ever since we were young we felt like some kind of inkling inkling or some kind of pool and whether you decided to choose or listen to it or acknowledge it or or not you know that's okay it's like you're eventually here right so Anyway, I can't wait to see what three more years and look back at this video and be like, oh, I can't believe that was there. But um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in a couple days for week two. Yeah. Okay. I love you guys.
Bye.